It's a huge country on the North American continent, divided into 10 provinces and three territories, and is home to about 38 million people. Welcome to Canada, eh? It's home also to some very interesting new finds. This was the main reason why we came here to Alberta to see these bubbles. From tiny ancient worms to gigantic beaver dams, ice fields to oceans of cranberries. They even have basketball on ice. Thought you knew all there was to know about the true North strong and free? These fantastic facts will have you seeing this beautiful country in a whole new way. Here are 15 shocking things recently discovered in Canada. Cambrian worms. Scientists just uncovered a fossil that's over 500 million years old. This is an ancient worm discovered in the province of British Columbia. It's called Adia from the Cambrian period. It's a worm with a tooth-lined mouth part that could be inverted into the trunk. A short posterior tail extension could also be inverted, and they could grow up to a half foot in length. The worms are usually found curved into a U-shape, with their sediment-filled guts often visible running down the center of the organism. The mouth-like part is adorned with 28 rows of hooks interspieced with a variety of spines. The creature actually had a throat full of teeth as well. Further along, the trunk bore two sets of four hooks arranged in a ring towards the rear end. And periodically, the worm shed its skin too, so it could grow. It might look a little scary, but this is an important discovery. Under a microscope, scientists looked at 40 different fossils from a location called the Upper Walcott Quarry that's now in a collection at the Smithsonian Institution, and 70 other specimens that are housed in the Royal Ontario Museum. And this special worm revealed itself as a new species. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Polar Bear Jail Situated on the banks of Hudson Bay in Manitoba, Canada, Churchill is one of the most remote towns in the world. Few places are inhabited so far north, but brutal temperatures and devastating isolation are not the only challenges people face living here. Living in Churchill has some bigger obstacles, and lots of them. Polar bears! It's the town's biggest threat, in fact. For decades, polar bears have become an everyday problem all over the region. This is likely because of the food supply available near the town, but also because the polar bears' natural food supplies are getting harder to find. So the people in Churchill had to come up with a solution for this dangerous problem, and fast. So, in the 1970s, the community adopted a polar bear alert program, so if you spot a bear, you contact officials and they'll try to scare the bears away. If that fails, the bear is tranquilized and taken to a holding facility, the world's only polar bear jail. And for up to 30 days, sometimes longer, they're deprived of food to discourage them from returning to town. It sounds harsh, but a polar bear stint in the prison is reserved for those animals who won't take the hint and keep coming back to town. That's why this place is known as the polar bear capital of the world. <laughs> Dunking on ice Recently, on a small lake 30 minutes outside of Ottawa, the capital of Canada, something special happened. These buddies had been doing their usual bit of training on their homemade ice rig when they decided to film a stunt they came up with just a few days before. Dunking a basketball after jumping a 25-foot gap. Clad in a number 10 Raptors jersey, commemorating Toronto Raptors basketball great DeMar DeRozan, the skating whiz set off. Five attempts later, he did it and less than six hours after posting the video, it went viral. Garnering millions of views on TikTok and likes galore on Instagram, this video was immediately picked up by the likes of ESPN, TSN, Barstool Sports, and countless news outlets in Canada and the US, where it received millions of more likes and a common reaction. Is this for real? It was also put up on the Jumbotron TV at the next Raptors game. And it wasn't enough, it also received praise from all types of professional athletes including Cleveland Browns star Odell Beckham Jr. and former Raptors shooting guard Terrence Ross. Not bad, right? Only in Canada would they mix basketball with ice skating. Would you watch a basketball game on ice? <laughs> Hair Freezing Contest Even in the brutal winters of the Yukon Territory, that's in northern Canada, hot water flows from the depths of the Earth's crust into Takini Hot Springs at the toasty temperature of 116 degrees Fahrenheit. Sounds toasty. The natural hot tub, which attracts hundreds of locals and tourists annually, lie just outside the city of Whitehorse. 
For most of the year, people spend hours relaxing in the mineral-rich and odorless waters. But much more is at stake during winter months when the pools become heated arenas for the world's only frozen hairdo competition, only in Canada. The hair freezing contest is a challenge of both art and science. Participants dunk their heads underwater, emerge into the frigid air, and style their looks into stiff, eye-catching sculptures. It's really about when science and art merge. Depending on one's creativity and luck with the elements, the results range from frosty, mop-like tangles to dramatically manicured spikes, serving only the finest frozen looks. Hair must be completely frozen, a feat best achieved when the air is 40 below zero. Once situated, entrants ring a wireless doorbell to notify a staff member to photograph them. It's worth splitting hairs when deciding on a final look. Winners earn $2,000 in Canadian dollars plus local infamy. <laughs> Ice bubbles. These lakes may look like they're full of bizarre floating sea creatures, but they're actually filled with thousands of frozen bubbles. Welcome to Abraham Lake in Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. These natural wonders are made of highly flammable methane gas, so technically they can cause an explosion if lit. They form in bodies of water when dead organic matter, like leaves or animals, sinks to the bottom to the delight of bacteria waiting below. The bacteria munch on the matter and poops out methane, which turns into white floating blobs when it comes into contact with frozen water, like here. But did you know that these bubbles are formed in thousands of lakes around the Arctic? Decreasing permafrost means more and more of this methane is being released into the atmosphere, a worrying trend for climate scientists who note that methane is a more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Most of the time, methane escaping from the surface of the water is relatively harmless. Abraham Lake is stunning in every season, but it really dazzles in the winter when its turquoise water freezes to reveal thousands of white bubbles below the surface. <laughs> ice caves. Looking up from a base of a swirling cavern of ice, deep in Whistler's backcountry, you see sunlight reflected with a kaleidoscope effect. They call this feature the cathedral. The slow-moving but ever-changing characteristics of the glacial shaft create a kind of frozen wonderland that's rarely seen by humans. It's a spectacular experience, he says a journey through the glassy hollows of a cave formed by the southernmost ice field of British Columbia's Coast Mountain Range. Step inside the ice cave and you'll see icicles stretching from floor to ceiling like columns. Broad channels carved by glacial waters curve and converge at various depths, filtering exterior light into rich shades of blue and purple. At the cave's bottom, the light changes dramatically, and people always want to hang out there. But rest assured, if hanging out at the bottom of an ice cave sounds daunting, take comfort in the fact that at least one infant and several guests over the age of 70 have taken the journey before you. Ooh, peering into this cool blue chasm of awesomeness also feels like staring into the eye of time and life itself. This cave offers a gaping new perspective of geologic time and what the world looks like underneath the powder. Cranberry Fields Considering the berry's delicate nature and vibrant ruby-red glow, it's hard to imagine that the ideal environment for its survival would be such an unusual and harsh place. But what is it about the cranberry that enables it to grow and thrive in a bog? They're one of North America's most distinctive types of wetlands, and their strange ecosystems characterized by thick moss, acidic waters, peat deposits, and a spongy, mat-like substance on the water surface. Cranberry vines produce horizontal stems called runners that may grow up to six feet long and can spread profusely over the bog's floor. They thrive best in beds within the bog. According to the BC Cranberry Marketing Commission, there are more than 6,500 acres of cranberry bogs spread across the communities of Richmond, Delta, Pitt Meadows, Langley, Chilliwack, and Vancouver Island. Who knew Canada was such a cranberry king? This region's cranberry harvest takes place each fall, usually wrapping up by the end of October. The eye-catching bogs come to life during a wet harvesting. During the process, the bogs are flooded with water, while the fruit is subsequently beaten off the vine. The berries float to the surface while they're corralled and loaded into delivery trucks. <laughs> Shipwreck in a lake the world's ocean floor is littered with around 3 million shipwrecks, according to the United Nations, but one of the most captivating is in a pool of water much smaller, the bottom of an Ontario lake. Sweepstakes was Canadian and built in Burlington, Ontario in 1867. It was damaged off Cove Island, then towed to Big Tub Harbor in the Georgian Bay of Lake Huron, where it sank in September of 1885. 
The remains now lie in Big Tub Harbor in the Fathom 5 National Marine Park in Ontario. At 218 tons, she was 119 feet long with a 23-foot long beam and a 10-foot depth of hold. The end came from sweepstakes in the summer of 1885 when she was hauling coal near Cove Island and her hull was damaged. She was towed to the head of Big Tub Harbor to be repaired, but the damage proved too extensive to make a repair economically viable. A decision was made to sink her and she was stripped of everything of value before being allowed to travel to the bottom of the seabed. Although she deteriorates more each year, she's considered one of the best preserved 19th century Great Lakes schooners to ever be discovered and it's often visited by tour boat passages, divers, and snorkelers. <laughs> Most northern town in the world. Would you live somewhere with weather cold enough to freeze your eyeballs? Not many would, but those that live in the most northerly town on earth have to endure it however they can. Welcome to Alert in Nunavut, Canada, where the average February temperature is minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit and the record low is minus 58. These temperatures are cold enough to freeze unprotected corneas, skin, and muscles in minutes. Alert has a total area of 808,000 square miles and a population of approximately 33,000 people. That's one person for every 25 square miles. There's the isolation too. The nearest town to Alert is 340 miles away and you can't reach it by car, only by air or sea or dog sled. It's dark for four months of the year and for four months, the sun doesn't even make it above the horizon. Alert isn't strictly a town, it's actually a military installation that's recorded as the northernmost inhabited place in the world. Those that live and work here, between a few dozen and sometimes over 200 at a time, are known as the frozen chosen, and most of the jobs available are in the military. Could you handle being so remote? Moscow and Russia, it turns out, is closer to Alert than the country's capital, Ottawa. <laughs> world's largest beaver dam. In 2007, an ecologist was scanning the Canadian wilderness with Google Earth in an effort to study permafrost melt in the wild. But then something unusual appeared on the screen. A beaver dam so huge, it was more than twice the length of the Hoover Dam. Located at the lip of Wood Buffalo National Park in Alberta, the world's largest beaver dam is at least 2,790 feet long. It likely contains thousands of trees and appears to have required the handiwork of at least two beaver families. It's believed that the beavers began the construction project up to three decades ago, and their tree-chomping labor has paid off. The furry architects have created the largest beaver dam in the world. The dam, which is about half a mile long, is so massive it even shows up on satellite images. It remained hidden within the Alberta wilderness until 2007, and still, the beavers are currently building new dams nearby, which were joined when the main structure could add over 300 more feet to its length. Beavers are one of the few species capable of creating structures that are significant enough to be seen from space. The toothy critters are remarkable environmental engineers. It's likely the beavers began working on the Alberta dam sometime in the 1970s, making it a multi-generational architectural endeavor. Hmm. Spotted Lake Spotted Lake is a strangely patterned body of water located in British Columbia. The Canadian broadcast company, aka the CBC, calls it the most magical place in Canada. You can see why. As most of the water starts to evaporate in summer, hundreds of big, beautiful, briny pools are left behind, leaving a polka-dotted landscape of yellow, green, and blue spots. The Spotted Lake is around a half mile long and about 200 yards wide. The length of the shore around the lake is 1.1 miles. It contains large amounts of magnesium sulfate, calcium and sodium sulfates, along with other minerals and traces of silver and titanium. During the hot summer months when there's more evaporation of the surface water, these minerals remain. As a result, the chemical balance of the lake is changed. The deposits of minerals crystallize and they form the colorful pools that give the lake its polka dot effect. What is really incredible about the lake is that the color of the pools change color because of chemical processes in the mineral deposits considered a sacred medicine by First Nations people in both Canada and the United States, it's believed that each of the spots has a specific power and can cure particular illnesses. <laughs> Downtown Bear A male black bear took an unlikely field trip after he hitched a ride on a garbage truck and ended up in downtown Vancouver recently. 
believed to be up to 18 months old, the bear was caught on video roaming on top of a garbage truck as conservation officers climbed the truck in order to tranquilize the bear, all in the heart of downtown Vancouver. It's unclear where the bear hitched the ride from, however. There are bears all over the west coast of Canada. While the bear's appearance appeared many city residents, a conservation officer with the British Columbia Conservation Officer Service says it makes sense that a bear ended up in the back of a garbage truck. Bears are a very opportunistic animal, they said, of the chance that a bear would get into a garbage truck. He probably just climbed inside and found a whole bunch of used garbage and had a big feast. Once in Vancouver, the bear was spotted after sticking his head from the truck. While the bear initially appeared nervous as officers approached him, the bear's appetite actually kept him calm as officers prepared to tranquilize him. While bears and other wild animals are not a common sight on the streets of Vancouver, this was not the first time in recent months that a wild animal made its way into an urban area in Canada. <laughs> Whales at Brunch The staff of Great Bear Lodge in British Columbia on the west coast of Canada witnessed a rare occurrence right next to their floating lodge recently, so they rushed to wake up their guests so they wouldn't miss out on this incredible sight. Humpback whales were bubble net feeding within a stone's throw of the dock. Bubble net feeding is when whales blow a circle of bubbles around a school of bait fish to trap them. One whale then sounds a feeding call, and the whales simultaneously rush to the surface with mouths open, feeding on the trapped fish. It's one of the few surface feeding behaviors that humpback whales are known to engage in. This type of feeding can be done alone or in groups with as many as 20 whales participating at once. Humpback whales are migratory and only eat during half the year. During this feeding season, they actively feed for up to 22 hours a day. They do this so they can store enough fat reserves to live through their breeding season when they don't eat at all. Last year was the first time they've seen whales bubble net feeding here. This is a popular destination to view grizzly bears in a remote area within the Great Bear Rainforest. Add whale watching to your agenda while you're here. Airplane Landing Motorists on Highway 407 in Ontario, near Toronto, were no doubt stunned to see a small plane execute a textbook emergency landing in the active lanes of the busy toll highway recently. Police say the Piper PA-28 Cherokee Warrior, with two experienced pilots on board, experienced engine trouble soon after taking off from an airport nearby and were forced to land in the eastbound lanes just before 11 a.m. This was its maiden voyage after its 100-hour inspection, too. And according to the pilots, they did the run-up on the ground. They had no problem with power, they took off from Buttonville Airport, and as soon as they leveled off, they noticed the fuel was a little lower in one tank than the other, and soon they noticed a power interruption. The plane was in the air less than a minute and had climbed over 2,000 feet when they began experiencing engine failure, and when the engine began sputtering, they knew they needed a new plan. They quickly realized returning to the airport was not an option. A traffic camera video captured the plane as it glided over Highway 404, dropped down to the left lane of the 407, coasted under a highway overhead sign and came to a stop. Dinosaur Mummy You can't see its bones, but scientists are hailing it as perhaps the best preserved dinosaur specimen ever unearthed. That's because those bones remain covered by intact skin and armor. 110 million years after the creature's death. The Royal Terrell Museum of Paleontology in Alberta recently unveiled a dinosaur so well-preserved that many have taken to calling it not a fossil, but an honest-to-goodness dinosaur mummy. When this dinosaur, a member of a newly discovered species called Nodosaur, was alive, it was an enormous four-legged herbivore protected by a spiky, plated armor and weighed in at approximately 3,000 pounds. With this creature's skin, armor, and even some of its guts intact, researchers are astounded at its near the unprecedented level of preservation. Today, the mummy is so intact that it still weighs 2,500 pounds. How the dinosaur mummy could remain so intact is something of a mystery, although researchers suggest that the nodosaur may have been swept away by a flooded river and carried out to sea, where it eventually sank to the ocean floor. As millions of years passed, minerals may have eventually taken the place of the dinosaur's armor and skin. This might help explain why the creature was preserved in such a lifelike form. See, Canada is a pretty exciting place. It may be huge and it might get very cold, but it's far from dull. Stick around for more great videos and like and subscribe while you're here. Mm -hmm.